explain. Nah, it's just a fish to fry. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry Podcast for 2025, episode number 613, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. We're jumping in headfirst into the world of AI to start off 2025. My guest today is a mathematician, has a PhD, and is the principal product manager for deep learning at MathWorks, Lucas Garcia. Lucas and I are discussing the biggest trends facing AI in the next year and beyond. We're chatting all about generative AI and what engineers should be looking for as it relates to Gen AI and their tools. We're also talking about verification and validation for AI, the trends surrounding AI-based reduced order models, and how AI can transform the world of control design. So, without further ado, please welcome Lucas to Fish Fry. Hi, Lucas. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, Lucas, going into 2025, what areas for advancement do you think engineers should focus on as we move into this new year? So that's a great question. As we move into 2025, there are several key areas where we're expecting engineering leaders to focus on to be able to leverage AI effectively. I'll try to break it down a bit. Naturally, for everybody these days, the elephant in the room is generative AI. Generative AI has revolutionized the field of AI, and we are seeing an expansion into no-code engineering tools. Next is verification and validation. Now, verification and validation isn't new and has been an integral part of the engineering workflows. However, as AI use rises in production, we're expecting to see a growing need in verification and validation of AI model behavior, especially in safety critical situations like those that you might find in automotive, healthcare, or aerospace. Next, the increasing complexity of systems and the need to manage high level of fidelity. Engineers often struggle to keep up with real-time execution constraints like those you find in computer-aided engineering or computational fluid dynamic situations. So AI-based reduced auto modeling can help address this by cutting computational demands while maintaining an acceptable level of fidelity. And lastly, advancements in control system design powered by AI are breaking new ground in in creating accurate nonlinear models, enhancing how we can manage and control complex systems. So we feel these are these essential areas for engineering teams to leverage AI effectively and stay competitive. Okay, so let's start with generative AI. What should engineers be watching for as it relates to Gen AI and their tools? Let's dive into what engineers should be keeping an eye on with generative AI. By 2025, we expect to see Gen AI making significant strides into no-code engineering tools like uh, block diagrams or 3D models, uh, flowcharts. These tools are essential for engineers because they allow them to visually map out complex systems, tweak components with ease, and, and handle all the intricacies that come with these systems. Now, the exciting part is that Gen AI can integrate with these tools to boost their productivity and while keeping the user interfaces familiar to engineers. This means engineers can expect AI copilots not only to aid in writing code, but also assist with no code engineering tools. Uh, which help in understanding engineering models and assist in their design and management. It's about making the tools smarter and more intuitive, which in turn validates engineers' confidence in the performance of the systems. So Lucas, why do engineers need to watch verification and validation for AI so closely? Right. As AI continues its rapid integration into sectors like automotive and healthcare, and aerospace, all these are safety critical industries. Industry bodies are stepping up with new compliance requirements and frameworks. And these aren't just bureaucratic hurdles. There are essential guidelines to ensure that AI systems are reliable, they're transparent, they are free from bias. For engineers, this means that the verification and validation process they are familiar with from traditional software development is also extremely relevant as they incorporate AI into their engineer systems, but needs to be adapted. So why is verification and validation or VNV 
in short, so critical in this context, I can start with robustness. AI models, or more specifically, deep learning models are really powerful, but can be surprisingly fragile if not dealt with caution. A minor change in the input, we call these adversarial examples, can lead to significant misclassifications. So imagine a neural network that is misinterpreting a subtle alteration in a chest X-ray image and is mistaking pneumonia for a normal lung. So that's where formal verification methods like abstract interpretation can come into play. They provide mathematical proof, a mathematical guarantee of a model's consistency and behavior and helps engineers to identify and fix vulnerabilities before deployment. This not only enhances reliability, but also aligns with safety standards, which is crucial for compliance. There are other methods and techniques that engineers should care about. For example, out of distribution de detection is another key piece of the puzzle. AI systems, must, AI systems must be able to recognize when they are encountering unfamiliar inputs and handle them appropriately. So this capability is, is key to prevent errors. And so by distinguishing in distribution and out of distribution data, AI models can defer in certain cases to human experts or just offload to human for safe handling, helping to maintain both accuracy and safety. And in the end, by focusing on V and V, engineers can meet current and upcoming AI standards and improve their product development. By actively working on compliance, they can make sure that AI systems are dependable, they're safe, they're fair, and I feel this is crucial for staying ahead in a fast-changing tech world of today. So, Lucas, you mentioned that the trend of using AI-based reduced-order models is expected to grow. So, explain to me why that is and what benefits do they offer engineers? Great question. So, the trend of using AI-based reduced-order models or AI-based ROMs in engineering is expected to grow for a few, a few several reasons. As they offer a range of benefits for engineers. Let me take a step back. Firstly, as AI technology and computational power continues to advance, engineers are better equipped to handle complex systems with high precision and speed. As an example, traditional models used in computer-aided engineering or computer fluid dynamics are accurate, but can be very demanding in terms of computational resources, and this makes them less ideal for real-time applications. Now, AI-based ROMs can solve this problem by reducing the computational load while still maintaining a good accuracy. And this means that engineers can simulate complex phenomena much faster, allowing for quicker design iterations and optimizations. Additionally, AI-based ROMs are highly adaptable to different parameters and conditions, making them useful across various scenarios. And this flexibility is especially beneficial in fields like aerospace, automotive, and energy, where systems often involve complex physical phenomena. When designing aircraft components like wings or engines, engineers can use AI-based ROMs to efficiently simulate aerodynamic properties and stress factors. And this allows them to iterate and refine designs quickly, test under various different flight conditions, and ultimately produce more reliable and cost-effective products. Overall, AI-based ROMs help engineers to improve system performance, reliability, and efficiency of the design and the simulation processes, uh, giving them a significant edge in developing innovative solutions in, in this fast-paced technological environment. So how has AI integration into control design transformed the field, particularly in managing complex systems and embedded applications? Traditionally, control systems relied on first principles modeling, which demanded deep system knowledge. Data-driven models were mostly linear and limited in scope, but AI is changing the game by enabling the creation of accurate nonlinear models from data. And this allows engineers to blend first principles with data or models that work across the entire operating range, significantly improving control over complex systems. What's more, with the Growing computational power of microcontrollers, AI algorithms can now be embedded directly into systems. And this is a big deal for industries like consumer electronics or automotive, where fast, uh, responsive systems are becoming the norm. Take power tools, for instance. 
AI can be embedded to monitor and react to environmental changes like sudden shifts in material density, for example. And this means the tools can automatically adjust, enhancing both safety and performance. Uh, the result, well, we are entering an era of more robust, adaptive, and intelligent control systems. Engineers can now create systems that learn and adapt in real time, offering unmatched precision and efficiency. AI-driven solutions are tackling traditional control challenges and paving the way for smarter and more integrated systems across the board. And as AI tools become more accessible, engineers can more easily tap into advanced capabilities, designing better systems faster. And it's an exciting time as AI continues to evolve, elevating its role in engineering and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Absolutely. Now, as you mentioned, AI is moving quickly. So Lucas, how can engineers keep pace and stay informed? Wow, absolutely. Uh, keeping up with the fast-paced world of AI is indeed a huge task. There's no one size fits all here. I can share a few strategies or tips that have worked for me. Firstly, continuous learning is key. I try to keep up with online courses, tutorials to stay on, on top of new developments. This is often complemented by attending conferences and webinars, which provide direct exposure to cutting edge research and innovations. Events like NeurIPS or local tech meetups are a great way to both learn and network. Secondly, engaging with the community is crucial. By attending these conferences, I'm able to connect with other experts and peers, share insights and learn from their experiences. Joining professional groups or working groups or online forums makes the whole experience much richer allowing for continuous integration and knowledge exchange. I also make it a point to stay up to date with publications, which is not always easy. Uh, reading papers and newsletters can keep you informed about the latest trends and breakthroughs. Here, I must admit that I frequently cheat and make use of, there's a great tool by Andre Karparthi called Archives Sanity Preserver. This is a site that aims to simplify the overwhelming list of papers uh, that are published every day. Yeah, and of course, podcasts are a fantastic resource. Your podcast is a definitely a must-stop for anyone looking to stay informed in the field. Perhaps lastly, I, I find blogs to be also incredibly useful. And I highly recommend the MathWorks AI blog by my colleague Sevilla. She's always full of good insights and, and practical advice. Fantastic. All right, Lucas, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, do you need a passport to get there? What would you have? Oh, tough question. Perhaps the toughest of all. <laughs> uh, okay, if I could have any meal right now, I believe it will be okonomiyaki. I had this in Hiroshima a few years back. I have to apologize to my Japanese friends for the mispronunciation. I love Japanese food. And I guess when we think about Japanese food, we all think of sushi, but Okonomiyaki offered something very different that I hadn't tried before. <laughs> I love it. Well, Lucas, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amelia. If you want even more information about MathWorks or to read their artificial intelligence blog, I've posted a couple links on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. And we are also now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me and our brand new animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. 
Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of January 10th, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.